Hey everybody, Nick Atronio here, and welcome to my seventh progress video of Roland Dionza's Saudade number no. three. So this video is going to be a little different, as I mentioned yesterday, because I am going to focus on a singular area that I have been working on over the course of the week. And that area is the last line of the first page. Right now you'll see the clips of everything uh, from my previous six videos. And then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about it. So as you can see, there was definite progress that was made over that section over the course of the week. Um, there was one video where I specifically worked out uh, that line rhythmically and did some counting and some practice on it and showed that. And that seemed to really be the sort of change, the key change over it. Um, as I've continued to work on it, and we'll see in the most recent video coming up, that really what I've been doing is breaking down this lick and just trying to work out all of the, the details uh, of it. So I'm gonna sort of walk you through the practice of that lick, um, of what I did today. I spent 15 minutes on this. So know that the 15 minutes is not a normal time that I would spend on this lick. I would probably spend about five minutes on it. Um, however, the seventh day, this day, I would not normally be practicing. However, I decided to do this for uh, the series um, and sort of make the seventh video a little bit different, a little special. Um, so what I did over the course of practicing for the 15 minutes is that I just sort of chunked out the, this, it's a whole line, this whole line. Uh, so there's a lot, to me what I'm finding is that I can't necessarily rely on the accuracy of my left hand. And what I'm noticing is that there are lots of left hand changes, uh, balance changes and position changes that can sort of throw off what would the accuracy of that lick. So in the first grouping that I did, which was the first beat, which is this lick. So right there, there's two different hand positions that I'm using. So here I'm using sort of this compressed, what I call a closed hand position, where my four fingers are going over the uh, span of three frets. And I'm tucking in that first, that second finger under the first finger. And the, the thing that happens is that by tucking that second finger under, I have to be careful of not losing the pressure of that pinky. So that's the first thing. Now when I come down for the fourth note and the sixteenth notes, I'm in a pretty um, horizontal hand position on the neck of the guitar rather than vertical uh, hand position. And so because of that, you'll notice that there is a, ch a shift in my uh, hand balance and in my elbow. Notice that my elbow is coming in as I shift down. Okay, And I want to do that so that I'm not here and I'm stressing out you know, the muscles in the top of my shoulder and my, and my bicep. So I practiced really focusing on, first of all, I'm not going to drop my second finger until I need it. And then finally, um, what I want to do in the shift is bring and pull my elbow down. But in reality, what I need to do is I need to let that elbow shift. So I'm going this way, and this is the movement. It's sort of counterproductive to what that shift is going to do. So you can see that happen. And I'm watching in the camera uh, viewfinder, so um, I'm usually watching my hand, which is making this a little bit awkward because I can't necessarily see what things are going on so you can see that so that was the first thing so there it is so now from here I go back up to this chord shape 
But now, I can keep this positioning for the next piece. So the first, like I said, the first part that I practiced was this. And I'm doing this slow practice. I've got the metronome on 66, which is the tempo of this section. And I'm doing two notes per click. And after four or five times of really uh, working that out, I'm then going to do one or two fast repetitions and I'll go back and forth with that for a little bit to see how consistent I can make that. And now, continuing on, I actually didn't connect uh, this next part. I actually started the next four notes. One, two, three, four. And I made sure that practice-wise, rhythmically, that I'm starting this on the E, one E, or actually this would be two E, two E and a three. So I'm making sure rhythmically it's still precise because that's going to have a different feel. So if I'm practicing this slow, it would be one and two and three, right? So again, I'm practicing that slow. And here what I noticed is that my thumb needs to move further on the neck of the guitar. So I want to have the thumb, when, when I'm shifting here, you can see my thumb sort of peeking out. I'm kind of doing that on purpose. That's where I want my thumb to be, which is right at the curve of the neck heel. Uh, usually as I'm just playing through it, I'm a little bit off and it's not that big a deal, but it does throw off the balance and it throws off my accuracy of that. So in this next little grouping, I focused on really making sure that I'm right in that spot. Again, slow, fast practice. So after I did those two sections, I then put them together. And again, I'm using slow and fast practice to work on that. So now we'll be as I get through. So as I'm practicing that, I'm also worry, worrying and paying attention to the amount of energy I'm using. Uh, sometimes I'm grabbing those shifts with a lot of force. So I'm really trying to just keep that nice and light in the left hand. That was pretty good um, and even slow I'm actually really focusing on light pressure in my left hand so now once I worked on that now it was time for the uh, sextuplet part which is this thing that whole thing um, so there I broke that down into two sections and the first one is I just want to make sure that I'm getting I'm getting that to happen. So the first four notes of that triplet. And so there I'm going triple it, boom, right? Um, so I'm doing three note groupings with the metronome if I'm playing slow practice. So now here, that, pro that proved to be a interesting spot where, where I would pull off the, set, the edge of the fretboard. Uh, what I found that to be were two things. One, because this is a three note slur, uh, three note slur to an open string, I want to make sure my first finger doesn't cut off that. So I'm going to use a little bit more sort of of my tip joint rolling off the edge of the guitar. You can see that happen in the video. I'll give you a slightly different angle. You can see that, right? And then I have that shift. So that was the first piece that I worked on. And then I would combine that with the piece right before it. That whole thing. Making sure that that didn't happen. So again, slow practice. And so the same things that I've worked, have been talking about balance, making sure that I'm getting even pressure here and that the addition of the second finger doesn't take the balance away from the pinky. Uh, from there, there's another shift in a hand position sort of postural change where I want to actually have the thumb up higher. So something that I always felt is that I'm like squeezing here towards the end and really not landing there comfortably. So now I'm practicing 
And I spent a little bit of time of figuring out, okay, where do I want that hand? And this is sort, sort of goes against common guitar um, tips, but I'm actually trying not to engage this thumb at all in, at this point and not squeezing. Um, so what I found that sort of worked for me, and this is a little odd, is that I'm using the top shoulder of the neck, the rounded part right at the top, I'm just laying my thumb there and letting that thumb hang out there. And I'm sort of hooking the thumb right here, but I'm not squeezing it. So this muscle isn't really being used, which is the muscle that happens when you start to squeeze things. Uh, I'm not forcing because that'll just, um, that'll just stress the thumb. But I'm just landing there and feeling that. Uh, so, that actually provides me with the most strength on that second finger to get a nice slur. So, it's this. Uh, now, what I have to watch out for with that is that open E note. So I'm kind of muting that open E once my first finger comes down. And so it's a lot of coordination. So, you know, after I worked through all those little chunks, really trying to identify those things, I then started put, putting it together. And you're going to hear the results of that right now. So over the course of the week of practicing the piece and, you know, working on that section, those are things that I had been thinking about and been working on and been trying to make myself aware of. Um, at this point, it's a lot of repetitions and it's a lot of just being comfortable with it. And I think the important part is that the slow practice is where all of that stuff is going to be built in. And I know that. So I'm going to make sure that I do my slow practice. The fast practices are nothing more than just seeing how well is it working. Um, is my body reacting to that? Is that becoming a reflex? Or is it still not exactly what I need it to be? So again, over the course of a week, a lot has progressed, I feel, with that section. And that section will continue to progress, continue to grow, continue to be worked on um, over the next four weeks that I have with this piece, maybe even five weeks. And it's something that I think we don't usually call attention to, even though teachers might tell you, okay, I want you to work on this for five minutes a day, every day over the course of the week. This is sort of the result of that. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I know the piece is nowhere near performance ready. Uh, I'm not presenting the piece in that sense, but that lick is starting to progress more and more every week uh, and every day. And I'm getting, I would feel significant improvement. And part of that improvement is just consistency. Can I nail that lick um, or get that lick to become successful when I play the piece? Uh, and that's really what I look for as I'm working on. So I hope you found that a little beneficial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to write them down below. Like I said, I will address them either in a new video or I'll just write back to you right in those comments. Um, you know, let me know what you think of this video. It's a little bit different than the other videos that I've done in this series so far. Uh, is this something that you want me to, con that you would find interesting for me to continue uh, on every seventh day of practice that I have? Is this something that interests you um, or not? Let me know. Uh, the seventh day video of each week is one of those, um, random videos because I don't have it. I'm not really practicing the piece in the same way. Um, the, I can also use it as a question and answer video if you want as well. So let me know your ideas down in the comments below. Um, and I'd love to hear from you guys. So if you stuck around to the end, thanks again for watching again, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. And make sure you hit that bell notification so that way you're notified every time I release a video. If you haven't done so already, please hit the thumbs up button, like this video, share it with your friends, uh, let them know about it. Let anybody who you think would be interested in this video and this series, please let them know about it uh, and share it on all your social media 
accounts. Tomorrow we'll be back with another video and my goal for tomorrow is to uh, start to work on that third movement and we'll see how it goes there. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.